Hello and welcome to chapter 2 out of 7 for the Learn to Ride a Skateboard Special Edition. Remember you can watch this entire video on the internet, or you can go to learntoridescapeboard.com and purchase a copy on DVD, or you can actually download DVD from learntoridescapeboard.com as well. So this next piece is about assembling a skateboard and putting all your safety gear on. And your safety gear is actually a really important part of the whole process because you've got to learn how to fall. And you're going to fall hard for your first couple times. It's just you're paying your dues in skateboarding. So uh, we're going to show you how to do that and um, how to put together your own setup. And the thing that I wanted to add uh, in talking about safety gear that I didn't have in the original video is wrist guards. I mentioned them briefly in the original video and I didn't really go into details about them. Um, these kind of wrist guards are one of my favorites. These are made by Pro Designs. And when I originally set out to create Learn to Ride a Skateboard, I made a very conscious decision to never mention any brand names. And the reason that I did that was simply because I wanted the video to kind of be timeless, right? And I thought if I start to mention specific brands, there's potential that maybe in five years or 10 years from now, you won't be able to find that equipment anymore. But I wanted to point out an aspect of the Pro Design guards that makes them really cool. As you can see here, the plastic that's on the bottom of the wrist when you actually put the wrist guard on, the plastic that goes into the palm is kind of the spoon shape. It kind of spreads out. And that's a really unusual design. I've never seen any other wrist guards do that. And it's great because it truly does spread out the impact when you come down and if you land on your hands. So, you know, ideally, you shouldn't be landing that way anyway. You should be doing the good old tuck and roll when you fall, but that doesn't always happen. As you can see from looking at these wrist guards, I have uh, just gone straight to my hands sometimes. And the spoon shape uh, is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention it's that hard. specific aspect of the Pro Design guards. So yeah. This um I think I've realized, I'm sorry, I just want to throw something in there. Yeah. When you're learning to drop in and you're putting all that weight forward, you go down on your your hands, your knees and your hands. So protecting your palms, your wrists from jamming them, that's a number one. Like I've seen a couple people just not just no pads or nothing, just try to drop in and then I've never seen them back in the sport again. So <laughs> you just want to protect yourself and uh, then one day you'll be cool and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then we'll never have to wear pads, which isn't true at all. Which you should always wear your helmet. Wrist guards, elbow guard, knee pads. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that, you know, to me this kind of stuff is important because you know, a lot of people, they do worry about that. They're like, you know, it's not cool to do whatever. Here's the thing. The reason I make these videos is because I love skateboarding. Therefore, I want people to skate. I want the sport to grow. I want people to participate. And what happens inevitably is that when people fall and they get hurt really bad, they don't skate anymore. And that's why safety gear is important to me, because I just want people to continue skateboarding. Mm -hmm. So, hope you enjoy this uh, next section of the special edition of Learn to Ride a Skateboard. Alright James Bond, now you need your gadgets to assemble your skateboard. You'll need a crescent wrench, a screwdriver, and a knife to cut the grip tape. No, wait, not that kind of a knife, just, you know, something like this, like an X-Acto knife or a razor blade or something like that. And that's it, that's all the tools you'll need. But you might want that, which is a skate tool, also known as a skate key. And uh, skate keys come in a huge variety of different sizes and shapes. And, you know, they basically will allow you to perform maintenance on your skateboard when you're out skating. So you can see it's really compact and small, and it has all these little crescent wrench things on it. So you can adjust your wheels, or you can adjust your kingpin, or here, then you can uh, adjust, like, the, the bolts that bolt the trucks to the deck and the hardware and all that sort of thing. So it's very cool. It's very versatile. You might want to uh, buy yourself a little skate tool and carry that with you when you ride. All right, so the very first thing that you're going to want to do when you put together a skateboard is put the grip tape on the deck. Now, as I've mentioned, it usually comes in a big sheet like this that you slap on like a big sticker. Or in this case, for this board, I'm actually going to put on different grip tape that comes in little squares and panels. So it makes it a little bit easier to put it on this way if you want to do any kind of artistic work. So there's one, two, three, four sheets that cover up the whole deck. I also want to take into account the logo right there on the deck so I can cut out a circle so it'll allow me to show the logo through the grip tape. So let's put on the first sheet. You just pull it off like this. It's just a big sticker. Remember that the grip tape's really sticky so you want to be really careful when you put it on. Now in this case, 
I put a little mark on the pencil on the deck so I can line it up right about there in the middle of my bolts. And you press down from the center going out so you don't have any air bubbles. Then you kind of want to push around the edges and just push it down nice and tight. Then uh, I've cut out a circle here and put on the second sheet right there so it looks really good. So then when you take off the back, revealing the adhesive, then I put it down. Here we go. Just like this, you line it up really carefully so it's right next to the first piece of grip tape. After your board is completely covered, you're going to want to cut off the excess grip tape. Now the best way to do that is by scoring the edge of the grip tape. You just use a screwdriver like this and you just rub along the side. Grip tape can be really rough and it can mess up scissors or your tools, so you can use a file like this or a skate tool that has a grip tape file on it. And then it's meant to do this and you just rub along the edge. And it's great because it discolors the black grip tape and turns it white. And you just rub it all the way around the perimeter of the skateboard like this until the whole board is scored like this. And you want to start cutting the grip tape. Even though I'm cutting it towards me, it's, you know, if you're a little kid, it's always good to usually try to cut it away from you. Be really, really careful. And if you're young, it's probably a good idea to have your mom or dad around too. And by scoring it, it kind of wears the grip tape a little bit too and makes it easier when you're cutting around the, the perimeter of the skateboard. Oh, but wait, we covered up our mounting holes. So what we want to do here, because we want to put our trucks on, we want to take a nail, one of the bolts usually that you're going to use for your trucks, and you just want to stick it in, flip the board over and poke it through like that. So you want to flip it around like this and redo the holes and just kind of do it in a circular motion so you can see where your bolts are going to go in and your trucks will be on the other side. One last little trick is if you do have air bubbles, is take an X-Acto knife for your razor blade and kind of pierce the grip tape like we've done here, and then press down with your thumb and get rid of that extra air bubble area and then your grip tape is nice and smooth on your skateboard. All right, now it's time to put in our bearings. So, what we're going to do is take this and stick it in there. Now, as you can see, one side of our bearing is black and the other side is silver. It doesn't really matter which side you put in, you can do it either way. In this case, I think I'll be putting up maybe the silver side. All right, so first thing you do is you take off your axle nut and you use your little crescent wrench and your unscrewed axle nut and you set that aside so you don't lose it. Alright, now you got these two washers here. See them? Alright, slide the two washers off and set those aside because you don't want to lose those either. Okay, now you take your bearing and like I said, I think I'll be putting the silver side out. Kind of like that. So you slide it on to the axle like so with the silver side pointing in and the black side pointing out. And then, you grab your wheel and you just kind of shove it on there. And you gotta push really freaking hard sometimes. If the veins are like popping out in your head then you know you're doing it right. And sometimes you might want to kind of push down on a table or the floor or something. You get it in there real good. And then you slide off the axle, and as you can see, the bearing is mounted, and it uh, goes pretty far into the wheel there. So there you go. There's one bearing, and then you need to put on the other one, because each wheel, of course, has two bearings. So this one, we'll be putting it on the same way. Slide it onto the axle first, and then you grab your wheel, and you push the wheel on, and then you get it in there. And, and, you know, I shouldn't be holding this in my hand. I should really be pushing down on the table or something hard because then it's easier to get it in. And uh, there we go. That, uh, there you go. There's a bearing. Two bearings in one wheel. And uh, that's all there is to that. Wait a second. Back that up. Ba back it up. Look at that. Look at the white side. See that one I just put in? L look at that. That's not mounted in there very good. On the white side, that, that could have been a done a lot better, but... Oh well, you get the idea. An alternative to using your axle is to use a bearing press. Now I, I highly recommend that you use a bearing press if you have access to one. Now see this little bag of these silver things? These are 
steel bearing spacers. Now bearing spacers are a thing that I, I didn't cover earlier, uh, but they're really, really great to use if you have them. Uh, this box of bearings right here, are really these are really good bearings. And as you can see, these little black things, uh, these are alloy bearing spacers. I like to use the steel bearing spacers, which is what I have off to the side right here, the silver one, these are steel. And basically what they do is they go between your bearings. And you'll be able to see that as I show you how to use the bearing press, where you flip up the spindle, and you put on a bearing on the spindle, and then you put on the spacer, and then you put on the wheel and then you put on the final bearing. And the purpose of the spacers is to make sure that there's no damage to the bearings as you slide the wheels sideways and things like that, especially if you're doing things like downhill racing and stuff. People frequently use spacers for, for that sort of thing. But you don't have to use them if you're just doing street skating and pool skating and things like that. Your, your bearings will usually be okay without them. So you can see here I'm turning the wheel and then pushing down and turning and pushing down. I'm doing that to make sure that the bearing is nice and flush. See here in the close-up how it's nice and even all the way around. It's not lopsided or anything. Now see where that arrow is pointing? That's the spacer inside. Now obviously it's not lined up properly, right? So it's a little bit loose inside the wheel. You got to make sure that when you put the wheel on the axle that it's not like that. You know, it's got to all line up so that the axle can slide smoothly through the wheel. And once you tighten everything up, the spacer should do its job and, and keep everything lined up properly. Okay, now we're going to mount the wheels onto the trucks. It's pretty simple, but I'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to do it right. So first what you want to do is you want to take the washer and put it onto your axle. Get on there, there we go. Then you can take your wheel with your bearings on it and you slip it right into the axle. Then you take your other washer and you want to put that onto the axle just like that. And then you want to take your axle nut and you put it on there and just use your fingers to turn it and tighten it as hard as you can. Then once you get it on pretty good, you want to grab your crescent wrench or a skate tool and you turn it clockwise to make it tighter. So here's one little trick. What you should do is when you're first putting it on, is you want to get it tight to where it's snug, to where the wheel's not moving. But you don't want to make it too tight because for me, I've over tightened it and actually ruined a couple pairs of bearings before and had to bring it back to the skate shop. <laughs> so you don't want it too tight, but you want it nice and snug. And then you loosen it right here, turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. And then you want to keep it so it's not too tight, not too loose, but so the wheel has a little bit of give. And then when you spin it like that, it just keeps going. All right, then you'll be free riding out there on the streets. <laughs> Over tighten it at first and then just back off a little bit until you just have a little bit of wiggle and then you're all done. Okay, your final step, mounting your trucks. Never, never mount your trucks this way with the kingpin bolt pointing towards the nose or the tail. Always have the bolt pointing in like this. Both trucks should have the kingpin bolts pointed towards each other. Now the reason that this is so incredibly important is because if you mount your trucks the wrong way, the board is actually going to turn the opposite of the way you lean. So you'll lean left and the board will turn right. Yeah, that's really not a good way to learn how to skate. So make sure you mount it exactly the way you see it on the screen right now with the kingpin bolt towards the middle of the deck, not towards the nose or the tail. That's bad. Okay, here's how you mount the trucks. Very simple. You take your mounting hardware and you got your trucks. Again, making sure that kingpin bolt is pointed towards the middle. You notice it's not pointed towards the tail. Okay, so first thing you do is uh, take your mounting hardware, take one of the bolts, and just slip it through the deck. Uh, starting on the grip tape side here, you slip that one through and then you kind of hold on to it and take another one and slip that one through and then you could sort of just hold on to them with your fingers, flip the board back over and then uh, take your riser pad and that's the next thing that's got to go on so you stick on the riser pad there and then you take your trucks and you slip the trucks on, kind of line it up and then take your lock nuts and you put down one on one side and then you put down the other one on the other side just kind of tighten them by hand then of course you need some tools here you need your crescent wrench and your screwdriver and you just hold on to the uh, bolt with the crescent wrench and then you 
stick the screwdriver in the screw and you tighten it down and you do that for all the trucks. Now make sure that when you're tightening your trucks down that you don't tighten them too much because if you do you can do something like this where you can actually start to pull the head of the screw into the wood of the board. You want it to be like that. You want it to be nice and flush uh, with the top. You don't want to kind of rip it through the deck. Once you're done, there you go. Congratulations, you have a fully assembled skateboard. Da -da -da -da. Okay, you got your board all together. The last step before you actually go skating is to get some good safety gear. And you're going to want a good helmet, good pair of elbow pads, good pair of knee pads, and you know, you can wear any old kind of sneakers, but sometimes a good pair of skate shoes is also a great idea. Now, when it comes to getting your helmet, make sure you buy all your gear at a professional skateboard shop. They'll help outfit you with a helmet like this that fits nice and snug. You don't want a helmet, that's going to be like this, wiggling all over your head, no, 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 no. That's no good. You want to make sure that it fits you properly so that when you wipe out, it stays in place. Perfect. Now make sure that your helmet conforms to the American Society for Testing and Materials, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and European Conformity. An additional thing to note is that not only are all of these certifications important, but there are specific numbers that go along with them. For example, the American Society of Testing and Materials should have the number F1492, which says that it is certified for skateboards. If it has the number 1447, that's wrong. That number is actually for bicycles. Now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission does not have a number corresponding to it, but European Conformity does have a number, which is EN 1078. And those numbers are the numbers that you should see along with the logo. You will see these three logos on stickers on the inside of your helmet, if it's a good quality helmet. This is what that sticker will look like. Now legally, that sticker has to be attached to the inside of the helmet. If it's only on the packaging, that's not good enough and it might not actually conform to those standards. Now make sure you wear the helmet the right way. Don't wear it way back on your head because then if you fall, you could slam your forehead into the ground. Well, that's no good. You wanna make sure that it's fitting properly so there, it hits on the helmet. Another thing, a lot of kids, they seem to wear their chin straps loose. Don't do that. They think it's cool. It looks really stupid. Okay, and also, don't fasten a chin strap that's going to be hanging way down below your chin. Okay? Make sure that it fits nice and snug so that the helmet doesn't come off. Perfect. Now again, make sure that you buy your gear at a professional skateboard shop. And when you're getting knee pads, they will be able to help you out with making sure that the knee pads fit properly. As you can see here, the pads that Holly are putting on fit really well. They're nice, good quality knee pads. Same thing with the elbow pads. You don't want to get something cheap. You know, this is not a place where you want to be skimping on the money that you spend. You want something that's really good quality so that when you do happen to take a spill, you're going to be well protected. After you take care of all the gear, make sure that you get a good pair of skate shoes. See the bottom there, how they're nice and flat? Well, that'll help you to stand on the grip tape and make it less likely that you're going to slip off. You know, a lot of skaters, they also wear wrist guards, and another option other than wrist guards uh, might be just a pair of gloves. And uh, these are the gloves that I usually wear. It's just actually a, a pair of cheap uh, motocross gloves, and they work out really well. So, that's it. We're all done. Let's move on to Chapter 2 and start skating.